but let's take a look at it. So they ask, can a man put away his wife for every cause? Jesus answers them, verse number four, and he answered and said unto them, have ye not read? And I just love that phrase. I love every time Jesus says that because the answers are already in the Bible. He's like, why are you coming to me? And especially with something so basic and simple. Like, haven't, you, haven't you read? And he's going to go back and quote Genesis. Like, hello. The first book of Moses. How about, how about we start there? Haven't you read? How about we go back to creation when God made man and woman? Like, like haven't you at least read that? I mean, isn't that something that, that the youngest of children start to learn? Hey, God created everything, and he created the animals, and he created the earth, and, and he created man, and he created a woman, and they got married and had babies. And, you know, like it's, it's the some of the most elementary basic things. And Jesus is rebuking them, saying, like, haven't you read? Haven't you read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And there we go with the, you know, who's going to get married? The male and the female. Very simple. A man and a woman. And this isn't those who identify themselves as a male. It's who God made to be male and female. That other nonsense isn't even referenced in this book because that is beyond stupidity and really deserves no <laughs> mention. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if that is something that is just completely unique to, to our day and age. I mean, the Bible says there's no new thing under the sun, but, but that level of just, I, I, it's hard to fathom. It's hard to fathom. I mean, were people really ever that stupid? I sure hope not. But probably. So he says, they made, he, God made them at the beginning male and female. Verse 5, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So the whole purpose of the marriage, he says, is for the man to leave his father and mother and the wife to come together and they're going to cleave to each other. It says, and they twain, twain means two, become one flesh through marriage. Verse 6, wherefore they are no more twain. He said, once that happens, they are no longer two people, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. So, He's quoting the Bible. He's quoting Genesis with Adam and Eve. This he's, refer, he's making this a broad application to all marriages. This isn't just unique to Adam and Eve. He's making the application based on their question, based on all marriages. According to this, we can deduce that Jesus Christ or that God joins people together in marriage, that God joins them, that with every marriage, God is joining a man and a woman together and they become one flesh. Now, what point do they become one flesh? When they consummate the marriage. I mean, that's what, that makes sense. The two bodies come together and become one, and from that moment on, you are one. This is also important to understand that he's even bringing that up about not dividing asunder what God has brought together and joined together and become one flesh. Because the only caveat that he has, the only time that a divorce is mentioned, and we'll get to that in just a minute, is, is, is with fornication. And fornication very clearly happens prior to marriage. In fact, let's just look at that. Look at verse number 9. The Bible says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. Notice, there's a contrast there between using the word fornication and using the word adultery. Both carry a meaning. Both are a result of the same physical action, but fornication is referred to as fornication when it's outside of marriage, and adultery refers to the same exact event when somebody's married. So, if somebody puts away his wife and marries another, the Bible says you're committing adultery. It doesn't say you're committing fornication. It says you're committing adultery. 
And who would the adultery be against? Not against your new spouse, against the old one, right? And whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. So once somebody has been put away to accept it be for fornication, then you're committing adultery because once you've been joined together, let not man divide asunder. And prior to that joining and coming together, fornication may have happened. And when you find out about that, that would be the allowance that is in Scripture for a divorce, for a putting away. However, that is not what God wants in a marriage at all, is any division, but that is the one time where it is acceptable or allowed in, law, in God's law. And, and, it's, and it's very, very simple. 